We expected Android P to arrive in mid-March, but Google surprised us all and just released it out of the blue. Yes, Android P is here, when Android Oreo is on less than 2% of all Android devices. But that's a topic for another time. Right now, let's talk about Android P. Hey guys, this is Akshay from bbomb.com and we've installed the Android P Developer Preview on our Pixel 2 XL. So let's take a look at all of the changes and new features in Android Pie, Android Pancake, Android Peanut Butter or whatever they'll call it. Before we get started, how about you hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we post a new video. Also, this video has been sponsored by AppMatch, an app recommendation service that suggests app based on your interests. Now then, let's talk about Android P. First and foremost, Android P brings a lot of visual changes. I mean, if you look at the home screen, it looks very similar to Android Oreo. But there are a lot of changes. Here's what I'm talking about. As is customary for every new Android version, the Quick Settings pane has received a complete makeover with nice rounded buttons for all the toggles that now look really iOS-like. To be honest, I like this new design so I have no complaints and although the looks have changed, it works pretty much the same. Also, notifications on Android P have received quite the revamp as well, and they now sport a clean, minimal look with rounded corners all over the place. But that's not all. Notifications will now also be able to display images in the notification itself, making it much easier to see what someone has sent. Notifications in Android P also have native support for smart replies in messaging apps, and the option to save replies as drafts if implemented by the developer. We also see a new redesigned settings page, a change that is so overused by Google, it seems as if it's permanently on their to-do list. This time around, the settings page has colored icons all over the place, and they do give a refreshing feel to what was otherwise a blue and white wasteland. A piece of interesting trivia, Android P will block custom overlays, making substratum themes useless. But the settings page on Android P is almost an exact replica of the Flux white substratum theme. Well played, Google. There are also changes in the way Android P handles animations. Moving between apps now has a side-to-side -side animation that looks very iPhone X like I mean, look at this. This is very similar. It almost looks like Google took some cues from Cupertino. We could say that Google puts the cue in Cupertino. No? Okay. As the rumor suggested, Android P has display cutout support which is just a fancy way of saying not support. So yeah, Google has accepted that Android phones will have notches now. So I think it's about time we accepted it too. The Android P developer preview even lets you visualize what different notches will look like and how the app interacts with them. This is actually meant for developers to test their features out and should translate into apps that play well with notches on Android phones. But you can also use it to take a look at what future Android smartphones will look like. Yet another useful feature that Android fans have been asking for for a very long time and even one that we actually mentioned in our video on features that Android still lacks is a screenshot editor. Thankfully, Android P has an editor built right into the OS itself. It's called Markup and brings a very basic editor that can let you crop, rotate or doodle on your screenshots. It's very similar to the screenshot tool that was introduced in iOS 11, so yeah, it does seem like Google is taking a lot of inspiration from iOS this time around. If you're living with a person like Rupesh, chances are you've woken up to find your phone in his hands with him going through all your personal stuff. Believe me, I know. Fortunately, Android P is making life better for us with a brand new feature called Lockdown. What it does is simple, just toggle the feature on and your phone will not unlock even if someone, <coughs> Rupesh, tries to use your finger to unlock it while you're sleeping. Basically, it's something that locks your fingerprint scanner. That's awesome and definitely something people will use. Anyway, moving on to more changes in Android P, the low power mode is sort of going through an identity crisis right about now with Google using at least two different names for the same thing. It's called Reduce Power Mode in the Battery Settings and Battery Saver in the Quick Settings style. 
More important though is the fact that battery saver mode can be set to automatically activate between any battery value between 5 and 70%. You know, for people who get panicky when their phone reaches 70%. It's all pretty pedestrian for me except one thing. The battery saver mode doesn't turn the status and navigation bar orange anymore. Which is awesome because that just, it looked terrible. Oh, this one is nice. Android P will let developers use what Google is calling multiple camera API. This opens up new creative ideas in dual camera phones like accessing the camera feed from both the lenses at the same time or getting a seamless zoom and even for getting stereoscopic shots from dual camera phones. It's awesome and developers can use this to create some amazing apps. I'm definitely looking forward to developers using this API in apps designed for Android P. And it also makes me think that maybe, just maybe, the Pixel 3 might come with dual cameras. Other than that, there are a few changes that I couldn't fit anywhere else, but they're worth knowing about. For example, the power menu now has a screenshot button, which is actually handy. The app info page keeps the uninstall and force quit buttons hidden in the three dot menu. Volume buttons change the media volume by default instead of ringer volume, which is a lifesaver. Lastly, Do Not Disturb mode doesn't have all the priority only, alarms only type of things anymore. It's just Do Not Disturb. If you're a developer watching this video, then Android P brings a ton of new features for you as well. First and foremost, apps in the background will no longer be able to access your camera, mic or any of the other sensors on your phone, which is great for privacy reasons. Improvements have been made to the Android runtime, which should result in better app performance with lower resource usage. Apps can now use Wi-Fi RTT to calculate a user's indoor position. Autofill now has better support for third-party apps. Lastly, there are some power-related changes that I couldn't really understand, so I'll just leave that to you. Now let's talk about our sponsors. AppMatch is a service that suggests apps that are custom-fit to your interests. They have a variety of quizzes that you can take and get recommendations accordingly. Let's try out this Tech Life quiz. I can answer these questions and at the end, the website shows the matches which are basically apps that meet my interests. I can swipe left and right depending on whether or not I like them. The service is completely free and you should check it out from the link in the description below. So yeah, Android P does look like it will be a great new OS from Google. However, keep in mind that this is just the first developer preview and there will definitely be a lot of changes before Android P is ready for prime time. So that was it guys, what do you think about Android P and which is your favourite feature? Do let me know in the comment section below. Also give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. That's me signing off, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.